Hi there, everyone. I am so, so, so sorry. Um, hi, everyone. Um, it's Armand Beasley here. Apologies for the delay in this live video. Um, we're 20 minutes behind. Um, we are joined by the fabulous, hopefully shortly, Ojas. Um, so, Ojas, again, please accept my apologies. It's me being a complete technophobe, um, but trying to get the the login details for Makeup Week India. Um, so, Ojas is going to join us ever so shortly. Um, here we go. There we go. I've got you. Um, first of all, my name is Armand Beasley, celebrity makeup artist based in the UK. I've got the gorgeous honour of interviewing celebrity makeup artists. Oh, Hi, yes. my darling. Oh, Love you, my darling. I, I'm so sorry. Please accept my Not apology. at all, not at all, not at all. I don't oh. really understand crazy i'm just going to turn these comments off because um we've got already getting loads of comments oh wow that's good you are very much loved let me tell you thank so, you um, thank you so much so are you my darling we're so oh. excited to go through the look with you so i want you to guide me darling what your version of a no makeup bollywood look would be darling okay yeah because i think to be honest the whole look is inspired by hollywood because like i said when i started 25 years back you know when i started doing the no makeup look using just you know very little foundation they used to think i'm crazy because you know in india they were yeah. predominantly using a lot of krylan and you know pan stick makeup pancake makeup so yes. it took a lot of convincing to make them get convinced that oh my god you need to kind of you know slow down your makeup product and start using more liquid foundation you get such stunning product nowadays that you don't have to worry so i would love to go ahead with you and you know maybe learn your tips and tricks because that'll be like a blessing in disguise oh my goodness well i am very honored um, no, I really yeah, mean it. I really mean it. Uh, uh, thank you, darling. I would, I would love to share with you as we go along, and then because this is a great thing about makeup artists like us working together. Um, you know what? You never stop learning, and I, I'm Definitely. hoping that I learn lots of tips from you, and then we can learn from each other. And oh then my we've gosh. Also got a lot of people. The figures are flying up now of, of who are oh, watching wow. us. So, makeup artists out there, please do send us your comments. Afterwards, I will ask Ojas if we can, because obviously I want to try and get rid of the comments at the bottom of the screen so we can, um, we can allow uh, Ojas to do her demonstration. So forgive me for turning off the comments right now. But Ojas, first of all, um, it's great to see you over there in Mumbai. I'm obviously here in the UK, Manchester. And I wish I could be there with you in person, but hopefully... But we're praying you come back soon. We're really praying you come back soon, yeah. seriously. I, and I would love to. So as soon as we can travel, I will be over there like a shot. And we can do some more creative work together. Oh my make God. We, that'll be the day. That'll be the day. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into the okay, crazy no, world uh, of beauty. <laughs> So basically, I've been a chartered accountant by profession because, you know, my parents were very strict of getting your education right. And my father was an accountant, so he always expected me to be, you know, having some degree. Now they feel it's like a safety measure for them because they, when we started 25 years back, makeup wasn't a very respectable profession in India. You know, they would say, oh, my God, what are you, you are a barber or whatever. You know, that's what the term they used to, you know, use, you know, which is very uh, derogatory. But I think that's what the mentality was. But luckily, like I said, because I, you know, in India, if you know, the foreign tagline, you know, always puts you up on that scale. Mm -hmm. So I had made up my mind because my mom found me to camp and to o OTT to be in Bombay. So she pushed me off to Miami <laughs> where my mom sister did. And my mom's sister and her daughter are Spanish. So they were so loving. They said, Otis, you need to follow your dream. You cannot be bullied like that. And they enrolled me in the Miami School of Hair and Makeup. And I also learned costume styling. So that was like a very uh, confident boost for me because I was somewhere down the line very lost. So I think this is a message for all the viewers. Please follow your dreams. Do not give up on your dreams because I think, you know, when we follow our dreams and we're persistent, our dreams become a passion and our passion become reality. And that's how we get success, you know, mm -hmm. because otherwise just for doing a job and just, you know, yeah, we have to go to work, we do this. That's not going to give you the excitement. That's not going to give you the success story. You have to definitely work hard for it. But you have to dream big. And if you dream big, things really happen. I'm the living example of it. <laughs> and also then I feel, you know, in India, when I came back, like I said, they had this very, oh, because she come from abroad, so maybe, you know, she'd be having some style. So then people started trying me out. And with due respect to all the Bollywood stars, I'm totally grateful to them because they never asked me once for a trial. 
and I don't understand this word trial, you know, because I tell a lot of fellow makeup artists, colleagues, you know, my juniors, my academy students, but never do anything for free because I'm sure you agree with me that when you do a free trial or something free, they never book you and they never credit you. They might think you're a desperado who's coming and doing their makeup for free. Mm. No, I, I do agree. I mean, I do trials sometimes for brides, but I always charge. I never do. Yeah, anything. why would you do it for free? Right? And your, it's oh. your credibility, your, you know, whole, whatever your whole, you know, perfection which you're there at. And that's why you're a name. That's why they're coming to you, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But of course, they have to pay for your time. We're yeah, serious about what we do. And it is a profession for us. Even your ideas. You're going to share all your ideas with them. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you have to also um, spend a lot of money building up your kit. So you, you can't really, I don't believe you can do things for free. So I, I totally agree with you there, Ojas. Exactly. So you came back to India and... You yeah, and then I, think I started working as a costume stylist, you know. I used to do uh -huh. clothes and everything. And yeah. thanks to a lot of designers, there was the new Shetty with the movie style who helped me out. His wife was a designer. Anna Singh is a very famous designer. Oh, Melotra. I love yeah, that. Anna's a darling. She's a wild catcher, but super fun. And Manish Malhotra and me used to model as, you know, students. Uh -huh. So I think that's somewhere down the line because it's model everything. So people said, okay, why not give it a try? But like I said, it was a homophobic country and, you know, they never took me seriously earlier. Mm -hmm. But like I never gave up. I've always been a go-getter. So I always felt that don't worry, you know, because you're feeling that I'm like that and you're slapping me on my face, my good work is going to be a slap on your face. And I started doing one work better than the other than the other. And the photographer started recommending me and I got my first Coca-Cola commercial with Esther Rai, who's the most beautiful lady of the world, you know. And oh, yes. she was, she's already a big name now, but that time she was the ruling queen of Bollywood, which she's still now. But you know what I'm saying? So never did she ask me for a trial or never did Urmila ask me for a trial or never did a Malaika, Malaika the Indian J-Lo. So I think one work after the other kind of, you know, got my confidence right. And even I got won the confidence of these stars who were working with me. And thanks to all the producers, directors, you know, who kind of literally helped me hone my skills better. Because like, like you said, we always learn because every actor, every technician has their ideas, their input, the lighting, the camera person, even they give their input. So you learn so much on the job, which yeah. made me a better person, a better professional, I would say. Then I think because of Bollywood, bridal market opened up lovely avenues. So, you know, that was a good thing. I don't know if you know, there was a movie called Jodha Akbar. Yes, yeah. Okay. With Ashra's very simple yeah. makeup, very subtle makeup. So that makeup started ruling the trend, what, 13, 14 years back, you know? Yes. And that time then people started calling us. In fact, my first bride was in London only in Leicester City. She's a Gujarati. They are called the Popat family. They own a lot of uh, motels over there called the Gables. If you heard of Gables, it's a very big chain. Okay. So that was my first ever bride because she was very fascinated with the whole look. So she booked me and the same designer who did the clothes. So then my dreams started happening and today I have my own academy from the past eight years, which is a blessing. And then we're still working hard. Like I said, we're still learning on the job, trying to update ourselves. Like today only another makeup artist and we were discussing. In fact, we want to know your uh, take on that. We've been all thinking of buying the ultraviolet sterilizer box that you get. You know, there's a box which you can keep in your studio, in your academy, or there's a one which you can carry it around with you also. Yes. What is your take on that, darling, so that we can disinfect all our tools? Yeah, well, you know, the thing is, the most important thing is that you, um, that you cleanse your tools as you go. And I still see a lot of makeup artists not cleansing their hands and not cleansing their brushes between clients. So I think once you have to um, use your normal cleansers on your tools, as you normally would do, and then put them in the sterilizing kit. Definitely, yeah, of it's, course. It's, of not, course. it's not a shortcut. You can't just think, I've got all my dirty um, products. I'll put them in the kit and magically clean them. Right, you need to wash them. You need to wash them. Absolutely, yeah. But it's worth an investment, right, in that? Um, I, I don't know. I Personally, I haven't invested in it as yet. Okay. Um, because Normally, you've I, seen salons have it. If you've seen all the salons, always have it, right? They have that little box. Yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, makeup artists now buying the little portable UV kits. Um, right. It's not something that I'm invested in as yet. Maybe I will do down the line, but I, I think my hygiene standards are very, very high anyway. <laughs> that um, we always have been learned. And I think whether it's Corona or no Corona, I've been telling the audience that please make sure that's a thumb rule for every time you need to cleanse your brushes, your tools every time, whether it's Corona or no Corona, because that's how you're going to maintain the kit well, your products are going to get spoiled. In other words, you get a lot of fungus happening, a lot of 
and it's yeah. expensive stuff. Like you said, we can't afford to lose expensive stuff. Yeah, and also you've got to be careful about how you treat your products. You know, never blow on um, a powder brush. And I still see makeup artists blowing on the powder brush to get rid of excess powder and then putting it on somebody's face. Or oh, even on lashes, even on lashes. Yes. Yeah, blowing on the lashes. <laughs> and then I also see um, people get their lip brush on a lipstick, wipe it onto the lipstick, then put it straight onto somebody's lip and then go back and reapply. And, you know, obviously that's cross-contamination. You really mustn't do that. But, you know, we should definitely have a chat about hygiene at another time. Oh, we must have an episode something. on hygiene, definitely. That would be definitely. really good. Be but tell me about your no makeup makeup look, because I am ready and I've reported for beauty camp. Okay, so I've already used a primer and a concealer. I've used the Tatcha moisturizer. Yeah, you am sure you know about the Tatcha moisturizer, the best moisturizer Which you've one? ever used. It's Which called one is the it? Tatcha. No, I haven't tried that one. Oh, you've not tried that? No. That's a fantastic moisturizer. Okay. So it holds the makeup very well, really, really well, and the makeup stays put. So, and after that, I've used the Laura Mercier primer. Gorgeous so one. that's the primer. Yeah. So that, because I have a little pores, I have a lot of fine pores, so I've used the primer very correctively, wherever I need, especially on the cheek area. Okay. And then I'm not a very foundation person because on my face, foundation doesn't really agree. I don't know why. Whenever I put foundation, you must, in fact, tell me, Mrs. Armand, whenever I put the best of foundation, my foundation looks very patchy. So I use a tinted sunscreen by Bioderma. Okay, yes. So this really works in me. I don't break at breakout, nothing. My skin behaves. It looks very clean. So I've used this all over with the beauty blender. Okay. And then I've just used a little bit for concealer, which is my favorite again. So I've mixed two concealers. I've mixed the cafe color of NARS. NARS is a radiant creamy concealer. So I've used okay. the cafe because I have a lot of pigmentation on this area. Yes. And because this is a little warm pink undertone, it cuts my greenery, if you know what I mean. Yes, yeah. So I've used that to camouflage my upper lip area and the chin area. And then I've used the light medium color of Tarte Shape Shape on my under eye, a little bit on the nose and ear. And I avoid putting it too much here because again, it gets stuck in my pore. So what I do is I use my finger and whatever product I've used here, I just pull it down. Okay. So it gives me a flawless uh, feel. Okay. And then I've just used very little loose powder by Laura Mercier on a powder puff. I've taken it like that and I've just dabbed the powder. That's all. And I've done my eyebrows. That's all. Super. <laughs> Looks great. What do you think? Is it fine, you think? Or would you have any other remedies to cover the pores, anything? No, I think it looks great. I think when it comes to open pores and pores, anything that's got a silica in there mm -hmm. will actually help to clear over and glide over the, the pores to help disguise them. Right. Um, I use the Smashbox primer, actually. Ah, okay. And I find that's really good. The photo finish one. Photo finish one, right. Yeah, it just it feels silky smooth, glides over open pores, and just oh, allows wow. the canvas to so be really try perfect. That. Yeah, because because I tried the benefit, but the benefit didn't do anything on my face. I don't like it. It's too waxy, I even I didn't like it. Because then what if the makeup becomes like one blob and it doesn't move, nothing moves. So I must try the Smashbox. So guys, hope you're listening. Smashbox is a primer to invest in. Yeah, I, I okay. love it. It's one of my favorite primers, definitely. Oh my God, that's lovely. And then I was thinking of using the Naked Palette on my eyes. Okay, so this is the Urban Decay Naked Palette. Yeah. No. The, oh, yeah. The, the Huda, Huda Beauty. Huda. Huda Beauty. Huda. Yeah. Huda Beauty. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So I love the colors there. They have some beautiful colors to play with these, all these naked colors. Oh, that's gorgeous. How many shades are in that? Oh, Jess, I think the three, six, are there about 18 shades in there? Yeah. Yeah. So I love the shades. They're very subtle, very soft, very pretty looking. And then I'm going to use the NARS blush later on when we come to the blush and the highlighter. So if you can help me to do the eyes. So I don't really need a primer because I've already put a little concealer over here. So I'm going to avoid putting any primer on the eyes. Okay. So what I normally like to do is I take the fluffy brush. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to play with these colors, like these subtle peachy pink colors. Okay. Please. Yeah. Yeah. And these, I love these first two colors. They're very soft. So what I normally do that first, draw my crease because I always feel it opens up the eye. 
and if you've seen the Bollywood trend or even like our Hollywood trends, you know, if you've seen the girls wear lashes, but they have a lovely crease, not too much of shadow. They just have a little sheen in the front. So that's what I'm going to try and replicate and see if I'm all right. So I love drawing this half crease. And what brushes do you use, Ojas? Do you have a variety? Uh, a, a brand? I have a mix of everything. I have a mix of Bobby Brown. I have a few Mac. I have a few, you know, so many ones. So okay. depends. Because sometimes what happens you travel, somebody get love this brush, you love that brush, so you get a little, you know, intimidated by them. So, and then you can't do without them. But also, what happens when I buy, I always touch it and feel it because sometimes even Mac has the most pokey brushes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the client say, "Oh my God, it's pokey!" And I'm like, "Darling, it's not made in my factory, darling." <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you just smudging that into the um, the crease of socket. the socket, just with the socket, and that is a it's kind of a a peachy tone, isn't it? Yeah, I love more coral tones. I'm a very big fan of coral tones, so that's why I'm using a little more peachy tone. I love coral as well. I think it just really brightens up the eyes, especially with Completely. brown eye. It really just brings out more amber tones in the eyes. True. True. And then I'm taking the fluffy brush and just blending it all clockwise, anti-clockwise. It doesn't look like a blob. Okay. I like it slightly pulled out. If you know what I'm saying, nowadays the trend is like nice pulled out eyeshadow eyes. I'm using a liner. I don't like liner. That's kind of very auntie looking. Yeah. <laughs> I hate the liner. Also, I love the brown color. And I think that's a good point, Ojas. When you're when you're pulling out the eyeshadow, try and remember for the people at home to go higher so they go at an angle. Because sometimes if you come down, it will draw your eye down. Yeah, it'll draw, make it you drop me. You pulled it up, so it creates that beautiful angle, which is very, very flat. And keeps the eyes lifted. Oh wow, I love that idea. I hope guys, y'all are listening. I think that's the most gorgeous tip he's ever given us. So please, y'all, darling, and watch. Then I'm taking the uh, Nars Narcissus palette, brown. Okay. So I'm going to take one of these browns. Okay. Just to deepen my crease here. Just a half C, like a half C. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the way it is. And that's going from the center point of the crease out. Yeah, just, just the center. You don't bring it down because like you said, it's going to weigh your eye down. Yeah. And I have a little droopy corner, so I have to be very careful. And what I feel just doing this half C kind of, like you said, it lifts your eye because what I've a lot of time you've seen clients or actresses also with the constant threading or lack of sleep, they have a lot of puffiness here. So yes. the eye goes like this. The minute you do this, this kind of lifts it up completely. Yeah. And I always love J-Lo. She gets this crease so bang on. I don't know how, but hers is like, oh my God. But also I feel some eyes really have naturally that crease. So I've always wondered that when people don't have a good eyelid, to draw the crease and get that perfection is sometimes a task. What do you advise us on that? Well, again, as, as people are maturing, the eye area tends to droop a little bit. So it is important as people look ahead, that right. they find that center point, the pupil, start there and then just shade out. And then I would do a coral and a tiny little bit of pink, just slightly higher here at the outer edge of the eye. And again, that just gives that flush of youth, just ah. at the outer edge. And it, I think that looks really, really pretty. Wow, that's a great idea. So we're going to try and use a bit of coral here. Gorgeous. Just on this portion, right? Perfect. Yeah. Am I right? Lovely. Yeah. I've seen a lot of L'Oreal ads. They have this kind of effect and it looks really stunning. That's beautiful. So it That's also beautiful. adds freshness, right? Am I right or wrong? It exactly. adds freshness. Absolutely. Okay. Then I'm going to also try and take a little bit of the brown shadow on my lower lash line just to open up my eyelashes. Is this a matte shade, Ojas? Yeah, these are matte finish, matte finish. Yeah. And again, that's another point. Um, I think it's important when you're doing a very natural look to try and go as much as possible for matte shades. 
because the shimmer and the glitters you then you're playing too much with texture and as you're doing there now you're using more matte shades and satin finishes which really makes the complexion look super fresh better definitely definitely wow guys i hope you all understand this tip and trick what he's explaining is so true that sometimes we get carried away using too much of shimmer but you know in india i don't know if you know this whatever shimmer you put they feel it still left they feel it should just empty the whole god palette on their face <laughs> It's like, oh my God! To convince them is like a nightmare. But I'm sure people who are watching this show are going to enjoy it. Also, what I'm doing is I'm slightly exaggerating the outer area a little up. So yeah. I'm again, it's going at that outside. angle. So I just is going at that angle, which gives that beautiful elongated look to the eye that lifts the eye up beautifully. Right. And like I said, I'm not a very liner person, so I just like a little bit of drama in the edges. And then I'm going to try and use is a brown pencil. Uh, I wanted to ask your advice on that. In fact, okay. Uh, if you've seen the brown shimmer pencil by Mac called Teddy, yeah, it's like a very soft brown. Okay. So I normally take the eyebrow cross brush, the angular brush, on the pencil. Yes. Because I've tried doing the pencil directly, it becomes too broad, and yes. I'm going to just draw it on my lash line. Yeah. For a very soft, diffused look, because black I feel makes me look like a witch. Doesn't suit me. So I've always noticed, uh, Arman, that a lot of time when we use black, I feel either the person looks harsh or it doesn't just go with them. So I try and use a brown pencil. But would you have any other recommendation in terms of brown? Well, as long as it depends on what kind of shade of brown it is. If it's, I would avoid anything with a red undertone to it. Uh -huh. Because sometimes it can make the eyes look a little bit sore. Um, ah, okay. So more of a, a flat tone of brown. So slightly more cooler tone of brown. Um, okay. Along the lash line like that. But you know what? Even a grey might look quite good. Oh my God, yeah. That's a lovely idea. Like oh a wow, deep definitely gray, like try a grey and send your picture. Seriously, that's a brilliant idea because I've never tried a grey, and I think it looked very nice. Oh. And I could maybe try coloured lenses. Wow, that would be the that would be awesome. insane. That would be really because, cool. Like I've seen foreigners because they've lovely coloured eyes. The grey looks so beautiful. You find a lot of air hostesses doing it. If you've seen, yes, yeah. But that steely grey can look really, really nice. Yeah, and especially really cool. then if you when you curl the lashes and you zigzag your mascara, when the oh. lashes turn out. That really contrasts nicely next to the grey. So that that. Oh really my good. god, that looks stunning. That looks stunning. So I'm going to try and do the mascara, like you said. Yeah. So zigzagging from root to tip. What mascara are you using there, Jess? That's a Forever 52. Ah, okay. Yeah, That's it's really nice. I really love it. It's not too thick, and it is it separates the lashes because sometimes you get certain mascaras where eyelashes look too clumpy. Yeah. Have you tried the Too Faced brand? No. Would you oh, advise that? Wow, it's amazing. So the brand is called Too Faced. Right. You get it internationally. And the mascara is called Better Than Sex. Wow. Okay, and my God, I must buy this. It's amazing. Um, is it in Sephora? Is it available at Sephora? Um, you can try. You can try. Okay. It might be in Nika, actually. Oh, wow. Um, I must check Nika. That's a very good idea. Yeah, but, but better than sex, it's great for anybody that's got straight eyelashes because oh. it really fans up the lashes and curls them up. It's amazing. Oh my God, that's a blessing. And then I'm going to try and use a beige white pencil by Kiko Milano. Okay. In my waterline. I really like Kiko. I think they're a very good brand. It's a very good brand. Very, very good affordable. pencil. And it's not too stark, also. The color's like a very beige white. Right? It just opens up and looks subtle, doesn't look. Yeah, it does. Easy. Yeah, because a lot of the time people can use white and it looks too stark. Uh, but right. that's really natural. Soft and nice. And then I'm going to try and use my favorite blush by NARS. Okay. It's called Orgasm. I think if I come to the UK, you know, I end up buying the whole NARS. So it's like too tempting. <laughs> I love NARS products. Oh my God. And it has a lovely creme blush as well as a powder. Creme doesn't look so good in my face because I have pores. So I try and use a little bit of the powder blush. 
So I always pout while doing it so that I just get a little cheekbone effect other than my face looks fat. And I blend it somewhere near the eyeshadow also. Okay. So you're going under the cheekbone to the temple and you've just popped a little bit on the, on the nose as well. Yeah. And a little bit on the forehead just to get a little sun-kissed look. Uh -huh. What do you think of this? That's really nice. Yeah. I love this color. I am in so much in love with this. And you know what? It's so out of stock all the time when we buy it. Did you know that we have a Narn store at the International Airport Bombay? Oh, right. Okay, really? Yeah. So every time we travel and we try to look for this thing, it's out of stock. But imagine <laughs> the amount of business they're doing is like crazy. I know. It's a phenomenally selling product, that. But, but I think makeup is one thing. There is no... Uh, no kind of, you know, low business or nothing. There's no recession, nothing. People want to buy makeup, which is good for us, you know. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's a product by Makeup Atelier Paris. That's very nice. They what do is it really called? Makeup Atelier Paris. Oh, wow. Okay. They're a brand. They're very good. You can get them online. Okay. Also, Inglot do a really Oh, yeah. Good I love product. Inglot glitters. Oh, my God. Yes. I used to be the brand ambassador in India with Inglot for three oh, years. Did I was you? the brand for L'Oreal Paris for three years. And after L'Oreal Paris, I was with Inglot also. Because I've done a lot of events. I've, in fact, the eyeshadow palette is a huge one. Oh, my God. And they have something called Dura Line. You've heard of the drops of Dura Line? Yes. Yes. Oh, my that God. They make so all good. pigments stay so beautifully. Yeah. So beautifully. So that's a good one. Viewers, if you're watching this, Dura Line by Inglot exceptionally good for controlling your glitter, fixing it in place, controlling eyeliner, fixing eyeliner it in place. Also. It's beautiful. Yeah, I like, I like the brand. And I also like the fact you can build up your colors in definitely, their freedom. Definitely, system. definitely. You're looking for the fluorescent colors. You know, when you want to do a fluorescent green shadow, it really helps to build and hold the color for a longer time. Exactly, yeah. That looks great. The next, I'm going to try and use the Huda highlighter. I, I'm so much in love with this. I'm going to use the base. There's very little left now. Almost over. <laughs> you need a new palette. <laughs> I need a new palette. So I'm going to use this color. This is my favorite. Okay. So just above my blush for a yeah. little dewy glow. Okay. So that's going next to the NARS blusher. Yeah. And just to give it a little bit more depth of color. Yeah. This gives a little sheen and a little element of glow. Yeah. And then I don't know if you heard of this Indian brand called Bali Glow. Have you heard of Bali Glow? No, no, I haven't. Oh my God, I must, I should give it to you when you come next time. They sent me a lot of goodies. Oh, they come up with twin uh, highlighter. They're really pretty. Ooh. They have a color peach and gold. Then they have a pink and a beige. And then they have like a raspberry color and a beige. Gorgeous. And they have to dye. Of course, if you see the effect, it's really nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's like yep. an instant lifter. Yep. That has really lifted the complexion. It's fused the colors together, so it's made the cheek and pop. Yeah, and then I'm That's using the beige color just a little bit on my nose and my chin. Yeah. And a little bit on the cheekbone. Okay. That's it. And I'm going to use my finger just a little bit over here on my brow bone. Very subtle, not too much. Uh-huh. So what I normally do is to, uh, if you can correct me if I'm doing this right or wrong, I normally do this and this. Yeah. This is a good way of doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. And a little bit my nose. That's all. That's my makeup, always, which I do. I don't normally do more than this. And then I do my lips, which I'm going to ask your help because I always struggle with my lips. So this is without outlining. I think a lot of people think I've done Botox. But if you see me without outline, there's nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> see, my upper lip is very small, if you notice. I normally have to draw it out. Do you sometimes put the highlighter just on your cupid's bow? Have you tried Never. That? I've never done that. You would advise that? Would you advise yeah. me that? Yeah, because that will really bring out the pout in your lips. Ah, okay. So I so should try to leave it to the lip, When you line the lip and you, you blend that in a little bit, pop a little bit of the highlighter just above the cupid's bow and that will really bring out the lips for you. Oh, wow. Thank you. So now I'm using the uh, lovely pencil by Nykaa. You've heard of Nykaa, obviously. Yeah. So I love the Nykaa pencils and they have a color called Petal. It's oh, okay. like a very soft rose color, really pretty color. 
I'm going to sharpen the pencil, sorry. Yep. And that's another good thing as well. That's a little tip for the lovely color. Always sharpen your pencils in front of your clients so they see that the pencil is clean. So that's for wow. any. That's a tip for people at home. Okay, guys. I hope you all are listening. I think this is a golden tip given by Arman that always sharpen your pencil. Maybe we can clean it up also and use it in front of the client so they know how you know how much of hygiene care you're taking. Other than things, you're like just one laid back person. Yeah. So now I'm going to try and do my lip. Okay, so you're starting from the Cupid's bow, moving outwards. Right. Yep. Yeah, is it fine, Arman? Yep, yep, perfect. And then do you shade in a little bit? Do you blur that line down? Yeah, I, I mix this inside. Yeah. Super. And then I have a similar lip balm, which is my favorite by MAC. Okay. So ideally, I try and mix it into my uh, lipstick. Do you ever wear a gloss? Do you ever go for a lip gloss? Or do you tend to? I like a gloss, but what happens around my hair goes like that, and then the whole thing goes to the toss. I try and avoid a gloss. It's a little cumbersome at times. Yeah. Especially when you people like us are all the time on the go, running, working. You know, really going for a party, then maybe I put a little gloss in the center. So I'm yeah. using this lovely color, a very, very favorite color of mine called number 10. It's by Red and Black Cosmetics. I endorse this brand in Bombay. Okay. It's a Korean okay. brand and they have some lovely lip colors. I must share them some with you. And I'm using this lovely watermelon color lip balm by MAC. Super. Okay. So I take, I mix a little bit so that it doesn't look too dry. And it goes with the lip pencil color. And what I feel is however tired you are, this color makes you look fresh. What do you think, Arman? Yeah, you know what? Now it's switched because even though it's quite a subtle color, it's switched the attention to the lips. So this is, a, I think this is a really good look for if you were going out day to night, you could add this color. But what you could have done instead of using the petal, is go for almost like a nude, fill in the whole of your lip with a nude and then just add the gloss. So it's a gloss. lot more softer. But this okay. is definitely day going into evening. So you've you've managed to make a natural look. I can lighten it slightly. Yeah, you've made a natural look more wearable for the evening as well. So for people that don't really want to wear a lot of makeup or they don't want to wear bright colors, this is a great look for, for those people. Okay. And I want you to guide me how to put the highlighter you were seeing in the center. Okay. So, oh, just where you see here, if you just mm -hmm. do that, so you just take your Cupid bow ever so slightly down, mm -hmm. and then with your highlighter and a very fine, that's it, and a very fine brush, mm -hmm. just there, where you can see my, uh -huh. just a little bit of a line with your highlighter there, and that will very subtly catch the light and make that pedal look a little bit more. That's perfect. Yeah. Oh, wow. Easy. I love that. Very subtle. It's super subtle. It's very subtle, yeah. And you can even put a little bit of that highlighter just on the, um, the heart of Center. the Center. I have something like this by Huda. I think they've given me this two-tone uh, lip color. Ooh. It's like a very beige sheen kind of a thing. Super. I love right. this. It's so yummy. It is so yummy. I can't tell you. I think Huda lipstick, I think nobody can really beat the Huda lipstick. Their lipstick is Huda do so right. well. They are killing it at the moment. And they really I last Huda long. But tell me right. something. I have some Inglot lipsticks, uh, Armand. And uh, again, I was having problems that they feel very dry. Like when you put it for the client, they look fabulous. But after a while, you see the inside portion starts looking a little gone. What do you do for that? Okay, um, what are you using on the lips beforehand as a balm? Do you just use a lip balm. 
Okay. Try and go, it, make sure that you use a lip balm that doesn't have any petroleum in. Um, so you, do you think Blistex works? Blistex? Uh, no. Common. I wouldn't use that. So I would use, I'm trying to think of a brand that's pretty universal that you can get hold of. Um, even a bit of coconut oil. You got some coconut oil. Oh, wow. Put okay. that on the lips first because it is quite conditioning. But always look for a brand if you can that doesn't have any petroleum in it because that will dry the lip out further. Um, okay. So I would use that first. Then I would use a creamy concealer all over the lip. Then oh, so that okay. will create the barrier, and then put that product on if you wanted to use that product. Oh my God, that's such a wonderful tip, guys. I hope you heard him. He said use a coconut oil base on your lips. Then use a creamy concealer as a base and then do your lipstick. And he said it's going to last you for a long time. I'm going to try this today. I hope you're going to try this and have fun. And please send us your DM. How happy are you with these tips? Because I think this is really going to be a lifetime tip. That's so sweet of you, Arman. My God. Oh, bless you. And bless also, Arman, for contouring a face like mine. My face is a little big, to be very honest. I have a big face. So I've always noticed the more I contour my face, the more obvious it looks. I, uh, the more subtle I leave it, it looks softer. Yeah. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you can see the shape of your features. You haven't got broad features, really. Um, you know, you've got good cheekbones there. If you wanted to do anything, just go for one or two shades deeper of powder, okay. just to go down the bridge of the nose and underneath the, the jawline. That's all you would need to do. But I think when you get into, when people start using contour sticks, Oh my God, I don't like You know, it's too strong. Um, so it, it, it's not flattering. So if you exactly. went with one shade or two shades darker than your normal powder. What color would you advise me from this? No, you need more of a complexion powder. Have you got anything that, actually probably the, um, the second one from the bottom on the left hand side. Sorry, come again. The second one from, oh, at the top. Okay, sorry, second one from the top. This one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably oh, okay. that one, but if you've got any kind of face powder that's slightly, that's matte, that's not shimmery. This matte, um, completely matte. Yeah, completely matte, and one or two shades deeper than the normal powder that you would use on your face. That's oh, all you need okay. for here, 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 and here. So try Let that. Try it this. Looks super soft, super subtle, but you need a straight brush as well. What brush have you got? Is okay, that okay? You're pinching it. Yeah, you're pinching it, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and? And then, yep, yeah, just under the cheekbone. When you start off with the colour, oh, just try and start here and then go under. So the saturation of colour is here? yeah, and it's stronger, and then it fades out there. And go like that? Yeah, because oh, sometimes wow. when I see people do this, they get more mm -hmm. colour here. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And it doesn't work. So if you start here and then sweep it under. Okay, so I start here. Yeah. And then go down. Yeah. So start really from the temple and go down. That's perfect. Oh, wow. I'm learning so much, guys. I hope everybody is watching this. My God, this is really a blessing. See, actually, that helped. Oh, my God, I love you. God bless you, my love. <laughs> now, would you advise me to shade my forehead with the same color or no? I don't think you need to because you no, haven't right? really got a huge forehead. The only people that have a very big forehead need to shade in a little bit. But no, you don't need to do no, that. No, right? Like that. So is it and perfect you both sides? And from your hair. Is it perfect, both sides? A little bit more on your... On this side, right? Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. So again, you said... Start from, from the, the bottom and go yeah. up. Start from the top where your finger is and, and sweep down. That's it. That's oh, wow. It. I love this tip. I am so very happy. There you God go. God bless you, my love. You and beautiful. then you said the same thing here, right, Arman? Yeah. So just literally here, down, just swiping it down. Okay. That's it. Oh and my when God, everybody uses so much nicer. Just a touch of highlighter down the bridge of the nose. Oh, that's a good all idea. Everybody needs. It's when people start to put too much highlighter on, it just looks too No, bright. then it looks too uh, oily, the nose. So just a sweep here. 
Yeah, that's it. That's it, right? Yeah, because sometimes people do overboard and also I wanted to ask you advice. Like I'm, uh, all my students have asked me to ask you, uh, like we were discussing that on Instagram, sometimes it's very deceptive the way they show the makeup, that they're taking like a whole chocolate corn and putting this, putting it here, doing this, doing that, or putting so much of foundation. Normally, otherwise, if you've seen people like you, me, or so many other makeup artists, barely use foundation too much because then it starts looking too much. Yeah. But you're just showing they're taking a beauty plan and they're applying this shade and that shade and applying so much of concealer, which is all the way. It's a gimmick, right? You don't advise putting so much of product, right? No. And you know what? Because we work with, with people in real life, so they're not on Instagram, they're not having a filter put on them. It's for a wedding, it's for a, a movie or whatever. Um, less is more oh. you really want the skin to be able to breathe you want to help to educate people into looking after their skin and especially in a climate like india india uh, oh my you god know, it's so humid so when people put on a lot of product that has a lot of silicon in there it can suffocate the skin and it just looks really really cakey so less is more just focus on foundation where you need it Okay. I never put foundation around the eyes. It's always just concealer around the eyes because the eye area is forty percent fine. The rest of the skin on the face. Oh so, my god! So just, Thank you. Just uh, be precise where you put it, and never take it down to the neck as well, unless people have got any kind of scar tissue here or blemishes. I always stop here, and by the time it gets to the jawline, you shouldn't be able to tell where your foundation starts and stops. Oh my God, thank you. Because I had a girl who, I am started my online classes last night and this is one girl and she was like, so I don't know, but this is what I've been taught and this is what is shown on Instagram and no, they have to put this. And she literally wants to put foundation first all over her face. All over means all over, like a face pack. Wow. Then she puts concealer and, and I felt, and then they said, oh my God, my under eyes creasing. But that's what's going to happen, right? Of course, yeah, that is going to happen. And you want to ask somebody really, why are they putting so much makeup on? Do they feel as if they need it? Um, and then I think when- You know, they tell us that because you're charging so much, how come you're being so stingy, you're putting less product? It's like, babe, it's not about that, you know? The Indian mentality is that, oh my God, she's charging too much money, but look at her, she's hardly using any foundation concealer, but how do you convince them? But isn't that flattering to say, you don't need all this makeup because you're beautiful? That's I the wish best they would thing. understand that. <laughs> that is the best thing to say. So if somebody's, if somebody's saying to you, why are you not putting so much on? You just say, you don't need it. Oh my God, that's so but true. It's great. <laughs> also, yeah. another thing I'd love to ask you is, Arman, uh, especially like you said, Indian weather in Bombay, especially, you know, we're shooting for long hours and definitely the cameramen don't want you to put too much foundation. Like when I first see, I'd rather play more with concealer than foundation. Yeah. Because it starts looking very masky, especially on this area, it looks like a mask. And then yeah. you go on the set and say, oh my God, reduce it. And the actor makes a big face. Oh no, I want it. And you know, you're in such a difficult situation because you have to make the actress happy and then you have to make the cameraman happy and all. Yeah. Also, we try and convince them that especially here, I try to put as less as possible. Because you don't get it, it melts or starts cracking. Yes. What, what would you advise? Is there a product or a primer that you would advise us to put for somebody who has a lot of fine lines? Or because actresses 30 plus tend to have a lot of creases happening very fast, you know, after makeup, maybe after two hours, you know, the lines start showing or laugh lines start showing. Yeah. So is there a particular primer that you swear by and you would like to share with us? Um, I think the Smashbox concealer is very good. It's a 24 hour concealer. And they do, I think, quite a lot of shades, about 30 shades in there. Okay. And I tend to use two shades per person because it depends if somebody's got quite puffy eyes, then you want a slightly deeper shade on the back of the eye and a lighter shade underneath. Um, but also bear in mind that the Smashbox concealers oxidize. So when you put them on, it looks pale at first, but it will go one or two shades darker. So remember that when people are choosing their colors. But I think that's great. Primer. But is there any primer that you would want us to put before that? Any primer or any product before? Well, around the eye? Either? No, I just think um, using the... Be careful of what the actress or the client is using around her eyes anyway. So if she's put a lot of foundation, a lot of moisturizer on her face, and it's gone further up the eye area here, it's going to go very shiny, very quick. So I would remove the excess make sure that the skin is super dry um, 
and then put the concealer on over the top. So you don't need to put any skincare product or any eye uh, eye base or any eye primer before putting a concealer. It depends on what their need is. If they've got um, very dry eyes anyway, then you will need that. If you're a maturer person and they've got lines coming through, then a little bit of um, eye gel with your ring finger, just patting that around the eye area. And, and even that motion of patting around the eye is so good for helping with lymphatic drainage. So it's oh, wow. great for actually easing away the puffiness. So ring finger. Which eye gel would you recommend, darling? Oh, gosh. Um, there's a brilliant brand called Skinergy, and I'm, I think they import to, the, to India. Uh, that's S-K-N hyphen R-G. Exceptionally okay. good. It's called Eye Elixir. Wow. Um, that is brilliant. And it's an organic, certified organic and vegan brand as well. Oh, wow. So I'm a big supporter of them. But if you want something okay. a bit more mainstream, um, then you could try... Uh, who's got a really good one? Um, I think actually the Smashbox one's pretty good. Oh, okay. The basic line that. is pretty good, actually. You can try okay, that. Okay. Oh, I just did a masterclass at Smashbox in their mall, you know, in the Phoenix Mall. Oh, uh, you have they to. made me uh, They made me endorse their new lip color called Gulabe. Ah. So okay. I did that and I did with them a huge masterclass in the atrium of the mall and it was a big hit. I love their stuff. So in fact, they promised to send me stuff. It still not comes. I hope y'all are watching, guys. I'm still waiting. The courier companies have already started. So please send me my product soon so I can really, you know, practice and create magic like Armand is, you know, kind of advising me. So and you please, know, another good product as well, Ojas, is for fixing the makeup, you can use two. There's either the Cryolin Fixing Spray or the Urban Decay. Or okay, my Urban Decay or Cryolin. Okay. And what do you think about, um, sorry? I love Urban Decay. I think they're a really good brand. Oh, okay. And what would you advise us in terms of setting powder? What do they do? Um, setting powder, I tend to use this, this two. There's one from a, a brand called Imani, which is E-M-A-N-I. E they're a okay. vegan brand created by an American makeup artist. And that's beautiful. So the bamboo setting powder is stunning. I use that oh. a lot. Um, okay. Or there's Anika Organic. Okay. Again, you can get online. That's certified organic as well. That's a really good powder. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. And then Krylon. Krylon have a very good set of powder as well, which fixes everything. Okay. And uh, like you shared, that's a wonderful trip that you said that people, when they have bags under the eyes, you said you would use a little warmer color inside the bag. And the outer area, you said you, you would use a lighter color. Yes, so you go one, one shade slightly darker right. than the skin tone on the puffiness. Right. One shade lighter than the skin tone underneath. Okay. Because light enhances dark recedes. So the darker the, um, the powder, it will knock the, the puffiness back. So that's a really okay. good tip. Especially and... good for people that wear um, spectacles. Because that can cause a lot of pressure here, build up a lot of puffiness here. That's a really good way to knock that puffiness back. Okay, and what kind of a powder would you advise putting on puffy eyes? Uh, sorry, say that again, darling. What kind of a powder would we put to set the puffy eyes after the concealer? Yeah, just like the bamboo setting powder, just any okay. kind of pressed powder or very lightweight powder. You don't need a lot because what you don't want to do is have any kind of powder sitting in any lines. Right. And just buff that. Use either a beauty blender or a soft concealer buffing brush. Okay. Oh, wow. And what is the PT white powder that a lot of people talk about? Some, you know, it looks like a white compact, you know, and this is the PT white powder to put under the eye. What does that do? Well, I've never used it. So I think it's something to bounce the light and, and make the eye. It's just a bright. gimmick, right? It's just a gimmick, right? Yeah. You know, it's. It's something else for a makeup artist to buy and somebody to buy into. So we're not using it. So obviously it's not made a difference to our lives. <laughs> and we're working That's on a daily awesome. basis with faces. <laughs> so, 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 so. The so key sweet. is, you know what, oh, just our kits can get as big as we like. And sure. you can't keep reinventing the wheel. It's just the same shades that get 
launched every year true, with a true. different name to it and a slightly different shade. Um, it's just a marketing gimmick, I'm sure that's what they do. It, it is really. And for me, I'm more about the texture of a product and the ethics of a brand as well. I'm very much into about brands and their ethics and also whether they're cruelty free or um, and what's in the actual product itself. So that helps my clients um, not only look good, but also feel good because they know that I've taken the time to look into what's in that product that's going on their face. Oh, that's so nice. Oh my God. That's so much of information. My God, we really, really, really love you. Oh, bless you. Darling, you bless know what? You. This has been an incredible chat. We must do this more often. We Hopefully have to. Everybody's we have got to. We lots have to. of Ojas's tips as well. Oh, my God. And oh you have God. totally smashed this natural look. So. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. It's all thanks to your help. I mean, I've learned so much with my cheekbone, which I'm definitely, definitely going to follow to the T. And do you want to answer a few questions, Arman, in case anybody has any questions for you? Yeah, if anybody's got any questions, let's, uh, let me jump on the... Um, Ooh, hang on a second. Let me just turn on the, uh, hang on a second. Um, turn on the comments. Let's, one second. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down the comments. Um, okay. Wow, there's a lot of comments. Um, lots of people saying that you are the best. Oh, oh. Yes. It's all Lots your love people. and Armand's love and everybody, you know, kind of coordination together. So we love you all, my darling. Thank you. That's so reassuring. So we've got people like All About Face, um, Rena joined, uh, Charlie, Deepa. Um, oh, wow. We've had a lot of people join oh, us. Wow. Um, so, no, we haven't got that many questions really at the moment. But if anybody has got a question. Yeah, I have some. They are oh, asking. Oh, uh, you got some? The two different concealers put on a foundation, how would you blend them? Darling, he already explained that to you all in detail. Yeah. If you're going to Ring follow finger, the story and go a little blend. higher. Uh, you want to tell us quickly the tip, darling, Arman? Okay, so um, you put the deeper shade on the puffiness of the eye, the lighter shade just here. You can use the applicator itself if it's on your skin. If you're doing it on a client, never use the applicator directly onto their skin because it's bad hygiene always decant it onto um, an aluminium tray and use your concealer brush or ring finger just to pat it in and smooth that in. Obviously, we're trying to minimize the amount of times now that we're touching somebody's face with our fingers. So use a concealer brush or a beauty blender to buff that in. Fabulous. Then they're asking, uh, Love to learn from you, sir and ma'am. How sweet. That's so sweet. Thank you. Okay, best foundation, what would you recommend for bride, they're asking. Oh, um, oh, Jess, what would you recommend for best foundation? Uh, I, right now, I'm very happy with the Giorgio Armani designer lift and the designer cream. I think they really work very well. And like you said, that I take just a wee bit buff in the skin and they look like skin. It doesn't look like one face pack or something. Because then, like, I feel, you know, when they wear clothes with Chatelier and you feel the stains that come on the clothes and it looks very scary. Yes, I'm just saying somebody wants to look very bright, then we try to match the skin and mattify the neck as well. But I think that works. But what was your one take? I also love this. In fact, I want to ask your advice. I'm right now uh, try, I'm going to try that. Somebody just sent me the Sheer Glow Foundation by Nard. Okay. What is your take on this, darling? Well, I can't use Nars because they sell in China. So... Um, which means that they will test an animal. So it's not a cruelty-free oh. brand. So that's the reason why I can't use NARS, unfortunately. Oh. Oh um, my God. They're a beautiful okay. brand, but it's just something that I can't carry in my kit. But uh, what I would use is Urban Decay 24-hour um, foundation, which is a lightweight foundation, or the Smashbox foundation, or Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, oh, yeah. Charlotte Tilbury is also magic. And I love the magical cream also. But I've yes. never tried the Smashbox foundation, unfortunately. I don't know why. I must want to try them out. The hydrating one is really good. 24 hour hydrating one. Right. And they do lots of shades too. So it's, okay. It's but you said Urban Decay is also really nice, right? You mentioned Urban Beautiful, Decay. beautiful brand. Oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. if you want to use a powder that has an SPF so you can mm -hmm. reapply it. It's a gorgeous mineral powder by Anika Organic. That's I-K-I-K-A, Organic. 
Okay. Back to 25 in there, and you literally buff it on. Anytime I'm doing TV or um, if I'm doing a photo shoot for me, I will put it on me because you can't tell that you're wearing it. So that, that's the beauty about that particular thing. Oh, wow. That's right. In AK. Okay. And they're asking how to hide acne marks. Okay. So um, personally, it depends on what type of acne mark they are. If it's scar tissue that has got indentation or if it's raised, two different techniques. If it's raised, I tend to use um, a deeper, cut slightly deeper color concealer just directly onto um, the raised area. And then I blur that down with a slightly lighter um, powder just around the edge of it. Because then, because it's lighter, that will actually, so because it's darker, that will flatten the oh, mark. Okay, wow. If it's an indentation, then you need something light reflecting to go onto the actual blemish and to bounce the light out so it pulls out that indentation so it makes your skin look a lot smoother. Oh my God, that's such a lovely tip. I hope you all remember this tip. Please buy heart it, make a note of it. Okay, can you give us some tips for contouring men's face? Okay, so um, I would suggest for a guy's face, always go one have three different shades. So you have the shade of color of foundation that matches their neck tone. That's the one that is the dominant shade. Then you have a shade darker, which would be used to maybe contour here, here, here. And then you have a shade lighter, which would go here, here, uh, maybe just slightly above the lip, um, and maybe here. So only three shades, that's all. If they've got very dry skin, I would use all cream or liquid. If they've got oh, okay. oily skin, I would use more powder. And you oh, should okay. then tend to have a slightly oilier skin. So try and go for a minimal powder. Oh, okay. That's a great thing. And uh, somebody's saying that, can you please, uh, you know, DM me. If you have my number on WhatsApp, so whatever the product you were mentioning, the powders, everything, if you can just write the spelling and send it to me, I can share it with them. Yes, yes, I will do, darling. I will yeah. do that. But and, uh, of course, uh, if anybody's got any questions, obviously, oh, Jess follows me. You can follow me at Armand Beasley, um, and that is on Instagram. Um, but obviously, we're going to be doing a lot more of these for Makeup Week, and we're hopefully going to be doing these live when I can come over and see you. It would be good to do right. a bit of a road show. It'd be oh, great. That's going to be really good news, guys. So please stay following us, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, how do you decide between bronzer and contour? Um, personally, I would use only a bronzer, a um, tiny bit. I'm not a big fan of, of glitter and sparkle and shimmer. Um, I think it's overused. I like skin to look like skin, but then add a little bit of glitter or sparkle only in tiny little areas because then it makes it look more special. So I would tend to go with a powder to contour everything. And then I may add a little bit of a bronzer just to get some warmth, just here, maybe around the hairline, or maybe under here, that's all. I, I don't know, I see a lot Just to add a little warmth to the face. Yeah. Okay. So Guy, I hope that answers your question, my darling Nidhi. Oh, you're such oh, Jess, an amazing we're person. running out of time, my darling. It's going to cut off in less than a minute. So. Okay, so sorry, guys. We need to thank say a big thank you to Arman for his valuable time. And oh, we promise we're going to be back with many, many more such tutorials. It's going to be a lot of fun. So please keep spreading the love. Stay positive, stay blessed, and don't worry. Be happy, be confident. This is just a passing phase, and life is going to bounce back as usual. And we're all going to be there loving each other and spreading lots of love and positivity. So, Thank you, Armand, for your valuable...